So this week's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be, for the most part, narrating just because of the sheer amount of information I want to try and get into this video. The first half is going to be how I made the uh, caustic soda paint stripper mix. And then the second half is going to be all the uh, test results. Dilunet or Otter Wall Marine Strip cost me around £45 for a 2.5 litre tub and I had to pay for two to remove the anti-foul from my boat and even that wasn't enough to remove the whole lot. It works brilliantly but costs a fortune so when I came across a thread on a forum that said mixing caustic soda with water and then thickening the mix with wallpaper paste would be pretty much the same as the caustic soda based paint strippers I'd previously used I decided to try it. Owing to the fact that I'm stripping all the paint and varnish off the inside of my boat, I thought this might be a good opportunity to see if I can save a couple of weeks worth of scraping and scrubbing and skip straight to being able to move forward with the V-Birth this week. First, just some safety information. Don't try this if you don't feel confident in your ability to do it safely because the responsibility is your own. Having said that, it's really not as dangerous as people make out and I think the exaggerated dangers seem to have put a few people off the idea on the forums. While the caustic soda is dry, it's pretty safe to touch with dry hands if you wipe it all off after. You wouldn't dip your hand in it, but it does show that small spills are, that are cleaned up quickly aren't too much of an issue. If safe to do so, hose down with plenty of water any caustic soda that you can't completely clear up. Safety goggles are a must though, as getting caustic soda in your eyes is about the worst thing you can do. Having someone on hand to wash your eyes out if an accident occurs isn't a bad idea. I'm adding 500 grams of caustic soda to one litre of water. Always make sure that you do add caustic soda to the full amount of water, because adding caustic soda to water gives off heat and it can boil. So it's important to make sure the, the container that you're using can stand up to the heat. Adding caustic soda slowly and allowing it to dissolve completely will help you control the heat being created. Make sure you continually stir otherwise the caustic soda becomes a large hard mass on the bottom of your container which takes a long time to dissolve. Here I'm adding 100 grams at a time and allowing the mixture to cool enough before adding more. Caustic soda will eat through aluminium and zinc though, so it's worth noting not to use these materials as containers. So no aluminium pots or galvanised steel um, pots or containers. Now the caustic soda has been fully dissolved into the water, adding the wallpaper mix until a thick gel is being made is next. It seems to take a little longer to thicken up to a gel than with just water alone, so adding small amounts at a time and keep stirring it for a few minutes seems to be the trick. And then add more if it needs it. It's better to add the wallpaper mix a few times and get it right than end up with a gel that's too thick. So pretty much as long as you've got your gloves on and you've got protection for your eyes, it's not really an issue. Application with a paintbrush is how I've chosen to apply the gel in the past and it's worked well, although you can apply it with a roller. Apply a thick layer all over the area you want stripped, but being careful not to allow drips onto areas you don't want to strip, as it will obviously quickly ruin finishes. Although it's said that this mix doesn't dry out, I found that when I applied it in the summer heat it dried out quickly. This hasn't happened while it's been cold and raining, but the trick to stop it dry drying out was to cover the area with plastic sheeting. I had to do this on the inside of the boat as I had the heating on. Cling film would work well, but I brought, bought a cheap roll of plastic dust sheets and cut them to size. Originally I tried to work with larger pieces of plastic, but later found out that smaller pieces work best with the seams taped up with masking tape to stop the wind from peeling them away. So here are the test results. This is the paint on the fiberglass on the interior. Now I did try and just wipe it away just to see if it come off. It came off a little bit, but 
even after a week of being on there, it was soft. It really, really softened up the top layer of paint. It was a dream to scrape off compared to what it is normally like. But it what well, it didn't work the best. The type of paint has proven to be difficult to get off anyway, and that's why I was trying this. Okay, now for the interior wood. I masked off a small section to test. I applied it in the same way. I just used a brush and applied a thick layer all over. After that, I used plastic sheeting and covered it up, left it for a week and then peeled it off. Once it was off, as you can see now, the darker patches of where the caustic sodas worked well. I scraped off the excess caustic soda, being careful not to drip any, and then the varnish that hadn't been completely eaten away was very, very soft, and it was very easy to to get all the, the excess off. But, to be honest, um, I would still recommend using a heat gun and a scraper to get the internal varnish off. Just because after peeling everything away and leaving it to dry, I was left with this. And it's the build-up of the caustic soda because I wasn't able to wash it off on the inside. But now for the washboards. The washboards it was a bit of a fail, to be honest. The caustic soda seemed to slowly eat away at the top layer of varnish. It did change colour, as you can see. At first, I thought this might have been because it was a special exterior varnish, but I tried it on my friend's boat on a bit of his companionway hatch. As you can see, it blistered up nicely. Uh, I wasn't there when he scraped it all off, but it did come up nicely. I've been told uh, all the varnish came off and I was just ready for a, for a light sanding. The geese enjoyed it too. And then finally, the anti foul. Now, I know I'm going to be sandblasting the hull now, but this is the only surface, this, this, this is the only paint I used the original marine strip caustic soda mix on. So I needed to do this in order to have a comparison in my head over was it working, was it not. For example, if I'd only done the washboards, I probably would have thought this was a fail. But as it turns out, it worked beautifully in the same way that the expensive marine strip did and cost me all of about £2.50, £3 rather than the £45 for the 2.5 litres. So I'd say it was worth the money just to test the small area and see if this will work for you. So the overall verdict for the DIY paint stripper using caustic soda and wallpaper mix is that it's definitely worth a go. I personally say that it works just as well as the much more expensive stuff. And for the price of it when you do it yourself, it, it really it costs nothing to tape off a little square, put some on and just see how it goes if you leave it there for a few days. You, you've got a lot more to gain than you have to lose, I think. But it does work on some paints and varnishes much better than it works on others. So that's why the next video I'm going to do is going to be regarding these filament wheels. Now, there are, I've, I've already, if, you, if people have been following my videos, you know, I've already tried uh, a poly wheel that, funny enough, it's, it's there, that really ate into the fiberglass. That was really aggressive. But these are nylon filament wheels with an added abrasive inside. I've already gave them a little go, but this video was getting on a little bit, so I thought I'd call it a day. But the, the next video will be about these.